That's look, man. Hey, I'm here to do the work. I'm here to do the work, and I'm here to work with whoever is willing to work. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With me and trying to help the people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but shoot, I got done taking. I didn't know you were in the race. Yeah, I just got done taking mine off. Well, you go ahead and take your mask off, man. You can take, go ahead and take your mask off. Appreciate you. How's uh, how's everything been? It's been good. It's been good. Good, man. Good, good, good. I know we met. Um, we met at the J Stone concert. Yeah, yeah. I had my birthday band. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man, that was a, that was a, that was a live concert, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do it. Uh, that only had one arm. What was his uh, name? The Diesel King, MD. Shout out to MD. Bruh, I was yeah. grooving to his stuff. And I was trying to figure out, I was like, who's, who's? Well, my favorite artist, you know what I'm saying? From the Cooper Road. Dude, he goes. He slaps. Yeah, yeah. His music slaps. Like, I was like, man. And yeah, the DZ Kane. Okay, DZ Kane. So now I know I know who to look up yeah, for yeah, all music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Play for him. Absolutely. Got a, got a nice, you know what I'm saying, variety of songs. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I really like the stuff that he was slapping. Yeah, yeah. Um, I met Ricky Lat. Yeah, Ricky Lat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ricky Lat, nice. Ooh, yeah. Everybody that you had there was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody that you yeah, had I'm, there I'm was nice. I'm a fan of those. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really about the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fan of those artists. So for my birthday, I've been wanting to hear people I like to listen to perform. Yeah. As well, and compensate them for their time. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they build. But I'm a fan of the, you know what I'm saying, of, of the of the rap music, of hip hop. So absolutely. As an artist myself and a fan. It was only right to, you know what I'm saying, bring it like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what made you decide to to bring Jay Stone out? I had went, um, me and two of my partners had went to Dallas, you know what I'm saying, seeing them live. You know 2018? Saying? Yeah. I was at that concert. In Dallas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying, I like the energy of that, you know what I'm saying, and Jay Stone wasn't on the stage at the concert, but he was at the after party. We went to the after party, okay. you know what I'm saying, at, at, the, at the bar. And Jay Stone was up there. So I had, we, we had been trying to see who was up next. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Pac-Man and Jay Stone, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the, the one, you know what I'm saying? Those were the wing men, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jay Stone come with substance, you know what I'm saying? He seemed like, you know what I'm saying, somebody that would, would come through that I would want to work with and build a relationship with since I wasn't, you know what I'm saying, fortunate enough to build one with Nipsey. Yeah. You know yeah. I still want to reach out to his camp and so that show support and love to the people that he was surrounded himself with. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I think that's real important about building that that yeah. that relationship yeah. with people just off the fact that it's like, hey man, I rock with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like what you're doing. And I think that's one of the things that like really kind of made me reach out to you as well because yeah, yeah. it wasn't just like first off, you know, I'm I'm originally from California. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Big Nip fan, uh, like Jay Stone's music, yeah. and then you know I'm there, and you know what I'm saying I'm like, oh snap, like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I just saw the way that you moved and you operated, yeah. and then to see some of your Facebook posts about how you were also socially engaged, yeah, um, and also politically engaged. You know that's that's right up my alley. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know I wanted to reach out to you about like. What does that look like for you as someone that is an entrepreneur, someone that is um, a lover of music uh, and culture yeah. and, and culture, but also uh, involved in social issues as, which tie into political issues? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a struggle, which like those and most things are when, when you, you know what I'm saying you're trying to align yourself with making the best out of everything. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So to, and to put all them. And I'm saying line them up to try to make the best out of them. Sometimes it's, it's difficult, but I try to manage to put the input and make all of them coincide together as one positive movement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying so, I try to get in, get people engaged because they all are related. You know what I'm saying the culture. You know what I'm saying is regulated by certain policies. You know what I'm saying so if yeah. we're gonna if we're gonna have a, a, a thriving culture and it's not gonna be interrupted, the policy have to you know what I'm saying coincide with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. So what are some of those policies that you that you can think of? Well, the policy has to be, you know what I'm saying, if we're gonna, if we're gonna want the best, you know what I'm saying, from a society standpoint, it, it's gotta be education. You know what I'm saying? Education reform is major. Because, you know what I'm saying, being my, um, my, my, my trainer, you know what I'm saying, shout out to D, Coach D, <laughs> lovely bodies, you know what I'm saying, I be talking to him and we bounce a lot of ideas and things that I be talking about on social media. We always go back and talk about certain topics. And, 
education it, it, if you're not if you're not educated properly you won't you won't you know what i'm saying you won't become who you are fully you know, mm -hmm. only, you know what i'm saying you can be physically as an adult but mentally not an adult right and that's one of the problems where you know what i'm saying where for they where police can come in there if you ain't gonna teach them at home we, we got to pray to for you we ain't, we ain't gonna get them right at home when they get grown pray they're gonna get them right yeah so, you know what I'm saying? so it started in the household but at the same time if they neglect it for you know what I'm saying, financial wise, you know what I'm saying, education wise, that's where they come in at. But the education is right, you know what I'm saying, the more conscious a person are and have more knowledge of self and self value, the less mm -hmm. crime will be committed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that only comes from the education, and the education has to be truthful. When we're not being educated truthfully about who we are, and we're relying on some people that don't want us to be, you know what I'm saying, know who we are, that's a conflict, and the conflict is laid bare right now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, knowledge is power. Yeah, right. And 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 wisdom is empowerment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's, it's, and that's interesting that you would say that about education because it does tie into absolutely everything. Yeah, uh, you can be educated to be poor. Yeah, just like you can be educated to be wealthy. Yeah, you can be educated to be free. Just like you can be educated to be enslaved or imprisoned yeah. um, or institutionalized yeah. and so you know when we hear about education when we think about education or we think about uh, what it means to be educated like it's all different types of education it's health education yeah. right uh, there's a big problem with diabetes high cholesterol <laughs> heart disease there's political education right and and just knowing how your government works yeah. and knowing how certain policies are happen so you know it's, it's very interesting that you would say education because it's so multifaceted yeah. and what were some of the things that helped you in your education of, of knowledge of self of education of who you are and that informing who you are today my mother I had one foot in the street, and she had my she had my other hand. It was a tug of war. You know what I'm saying, and certain things that I ran from, I tried to run from. I can only run so far. You know yeah. And when I went to prison, you know what I'm saying that played a part in it too. Right? Okay, that was the last. Like now you you forced to sit down and look at what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. When I, tie, when I was able to put that, you know what I'm saying, with what she, you know what I'm saying, had already instilled in me, and I had time to focus on that, with that, you know what I'm saying, being in prison, it, it helped me become a, a, a man, you know what I'm saying, and that was transpired, and I matured more mentally, and applied certain things, and became, became more in tune to what's going on, doing the research, you know what I'm saying, reading certain books, finding out about history outside of the education system. My mother wanted me to leave high school at 17, you know what I'm saying? But I, want, I was, I was kind of one of the ones, you know what I'm saying, properly where I was known at high school, so I liked going to school. But she wanted me to get my GED and leave, you know what I'm saying, school. Because she didn't want me conditioned, you know what I'm mm. saying? My mother, my niece was homeschooled, you know what I'm saying? My mother been on homeschooling, they, you know what I'm saying? She feel like the system at that time was built to condition you to work for the system, and that's it, you know what I'm saying? So I was able to get that way of life and the other way of life too. So I, yeah. I was benefited yeah. from both ways and that went on with a lot of my lifestyle. I was, you know what I'm saying, like I said, I was in the street, but I still had certain morals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I seen people make decisions based on their situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had homeboys that based, you know what I'm saying, only on the situation. You know what I'm saying? Not getting loved and not, you know what I'm saying, not having nobody to talk to and it, it, become, it became a resistance to society. You know what I'm saying? Only you can relate to it if you're going through that same kind of Neglect and mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard. It's hard. I, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't get blessed to go through the ringer and come out and have a story to tell and made it out. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people that don't make it. You know what yeah. what I'm saying? And I was able to be blessed to make it by education and it becoming a becoming a person to make better decisions. Once you, you know what I'm saying? They go back to once you educate yourself and you learn your self value. Certain things you just not going to allow to put yourself in because you know what you have to lose. You know yeah. Man? And rational thinking, logical thinking, and being disciplined. Mm -hmm. you, I was saying you had to practice that. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't ate pork since I was 12 years old. You know what I'm saying? So things like that may not, oh, you just don't eat pork, but when you're able to wean, you know what I'm saying? When your mother put that in, you to wean yourself from that. I was one of the, I was the only person on my school bus that had a sack lunch. You know what I'm saying? She was molding me to be a, you know what I'm saying, a leader. But I was a good leader because a, a great, you know what I'm saying? A good follower becomes a great leader. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't have a problem with saying they follow. Everybody follow something. Yeah. At some point. And I thought I had to follow that. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in that household. And once I became like, okay, well, I can, I'm living without that, so that's not something I needed. So I was able to do away with that. I didn't fast before. I, I take a lot of teachings from the nation and Al Islam. That was in my household. Absolutely. So, you know what I'm saying? So all that was implemented, you know what I'm saying? Until my way of life. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because, uh, uh, you know, the thing that really got my attention was when I got arrested. Yeah. Right. And it's amazing. You know, I didn't spend any time. That six hours in jail was enough for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the cold part is I bailed my own self out. Yeah. yeah. Right. I bailed my own self out. And it was my first time ever having really gotten in trouble. I've been able to, to evade much of it, right? But this particular time, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And um, if I would have known, I would have saved myself $1,500 because I was going to get arraigned in the morning anyway yeah. and get released, yeah. right? But it was that ex that experience of me getting arrested and then just how it affected my life from then on. Um, it was it was like I really had to do that introspe introspection within myself yeah. about like like me getting arrested was only a symptom of a real problem yeah and yeah. that real problem was my thinking yeah. the decisions that i was making the way in which i saw the world in which i viewed myself yeah yeah right uh because i was not loving myself yeah. i was not appreciating who i truly was i wasn't living within the truth that was put inside of me and that comes from our upbringing that came from my parents that came from the school that i went to i went i i was blessed to be able to go to a black christian school when i was younger um you know you know i don't know if you know this about me but i started college when i was 10. oh yeah yeah i know that yeah 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 uh started college at 10 started full-time at 14 and then graduated at 19. Oh, yeah, what's up? Right? What's up? So, you know, having gone through the, crim the criminal justice system at 20, you know, at, at 21, and having that experience, it was like it really just kind of opened my eyes to yeah. things I wouldn't have been privy to in the sense of, like, look, there are people who make mistakes. For real. Right? There are people who make mistakes, and if they are continually paying for those mistakes, um, after they've quote unquote paid their debt to society but they're never allowed to amass what was left of their life yeah, or rebuild yeah, yeah. what was left of their life uh, and build something greater yeah it come, it's definitely it's better come back and hunt them and make them run, restart again everywhere every door is getting closed in your face you know what I'm saying? man you know it's crazy um, and you don't know why the doors are necessarily being closed. That's the crazy part about yeah. it. You know, I, I got three degrees, man. I got three degrees. Yeah. And you would imagine that with a mechanical engineering degree, a Juris Doctorate, and an MBA, that I applied to become a substitute teacher uh, at the DC, in, in when I was living in DC. And I got denied because of my arrest. Right? They show you that this just another example of how, how how the system as it was has failed. You know what I'm saying? And you look at you know the system is a corporation now, and and the people in the government that have been there. You know what I'm saying? It, it looks like it's going. It's a hope for change. That's why I, I rally around. And I'm rallying people around to. I think this is going to be. You know what I'm saying? A transition from that. People yeah. are moving away in the time for a new thing. People are really coming to grips with. This failed system. Yeah. So it been it been failing, but it was but it was the agenda that they wanted it for was 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 a success. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because any other corporation that you put this, you know what I'm saying, jail and the prison system in, the 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 cause of this jail is to, you know what I'm saying, you look at the statistics of what it's supposed to do, it hadn't done that. Yeah. But it had done what they wanted it to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which was to keep recidivism rates high. Yeah. 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? But any other place where we're going to set up a, a system that we're going to, you know what I'm saying, punish people and they're going to come out better, that hasn't happened. But they haven't still haven't changed that, you know what I'm saying, that way of doing things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that staff kept that in, it's like the wall of drugs, they finally realized that, you know what I'm saying? So that was a step to end the wall of drugs because how you can you treat an addiction with, you know what I'm saying, a criminal act. No matter, I don't care if I'm going to jail, if I'm addicted to this drug, I'm going to do what I got to do to exactly. get it. No matter if I go to jail or not. Exactly. So it's not, it's, you know what I'm saying, the things they have set up has failed all over and they benefited from the failure that they put in place. Yeah. 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 Prison, they go back to ed education, you know what I'm saying, prison reform. You know I know. I think I read about you telling me about you know what I'm saying, the juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. They should be abolished. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a failure too. Because mm -hmm. most of the people that went to juvenile end up still in adult jail. Look, man. When I looked at the statistics, if once they once they have gone into secure detention, right? The secure detention facilities, the juvenile jails. There's a 50% chance of them coming back within three years. Put that on the stock market. How many oh, people, you know what I'm saying? Man. Now, now the benefits on the stock market for the private institutions, that's right up there added for people that want to invest. But if they were investing on a, on a, on a system to work in that, they wouldn't, nobody would take that gamble. It's 50% that, okay, you're going to 50% saying, I'm gonna, we're going to incorporate something that it's still a 50% saying that this is not going to work. This is not going to be beneficial to this juvenile. So why is it still in place? Literally because flipping the, the coin. You know what I'm saying? And then now they, it went farther to the point where now the pipeline from school, we're going to, you know what I'm saying? We're going to skip juvenile now. If you're, if you're in high school, we're taking you right to jail if you fight. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. I'm going to pause you right there. I'm going to go get the wind filter. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody call you. Oh, somebody's calling?